Module 3, Implementation, June 17th to June 23rd, 2012. Today's lecture will discuss the importance of developing instructional units where students are expected to produce products as a summative assessment. However, you do not want to limit students to one product that they can produce. Rather, you want to, pro you want to provide them with a range of product options. One way to accomplish this is through menus. I am sure that you have read the Hecox text for this week, so I will, you will notice that I am not touching on all of the topics discussed in those readings. However, I feel that these are self-explanatory, so I will address these concepts mentioned in the text through our class conversations. However, today's lecture will discuss products, choices, and menus. This part of the class lecture will discuss products. I suggest you thoroughly read the document under the class lecture section in this module titled Products. It is a simple list. Uh, if, uh, it, is, it is a simple list of, products, of product ideas you can use to help differentiate instruction. Now, a product is a tangible evidence of student learning. They allow students to express themselves and convey their ideas in unique and complex ways that have real-world application. Rather than sorting through their brain to find a single right answer to a test question, product development allows students to find unique solutions to complex problems. <coughs> the act of finding these solutions develops important process skills. <coughs> Many of these process skills fall into the areas uh, discussed in Bloom. The types of products created should represent analysis and synthesis of knowledge acquired through research. As you move through this lecture, you will see how providing several options for product development will help differentiate the curriculum because you are offering students with choice. However, you are providing boundaries so that choices are not limitless. We know that young children excel when given choice, but sometimes, as we've mentioned in our class conversations last week, too much choice is paralyzing. When teachers give a menu of options in a structured manner and allow students to choose from these menus of options, student learning is more noticeable. Providing these learning experiences allows students to maintain their motivation to learn and participate. Product development is an ideal way for diverse learners to express what they have learned. Product development allows students to capitalize on their strengths and reveal, the, reveal what they have learned. By taking a look at these categories mentioned here, you can see why it is important to conduct a student learning style survey at the beginning of each year. So whether you're coming up with a written product, such as a poem, a persuasive essay, a research paper, a song, or even a narrative story. Uh, a visual. Perhaps you come up with a book jacket, a drawing, a bulletin board, a storyboard, a diorama, or a mural. Performances could include a dance or a puppet show, maybe even a comedy sketch. Oral could be debate, persuasive speech, seminar, or mock trial. Multicategorical. Products that require the use of two or more of the products I just listed are found in any of the Hecop text ideas. It's just important to remember to vary the choices that students are given. The topic of choice is an important one for all children, not just gifted students. When we talk about giving choice to students, we need to realize that many of them are not used to being given this option. In fact, over my time as a university professor, I've noticed that my undergraduate students struggle unless they are given very specific, step-by-step -step procedures on how to complete an assignment. Certainly, they enjoy being given the opportunity to select among a few choices, but they are not always sure how to move forward after they have selected their pathway. As such, it is you should recognize that this is true for younger students, and notice that it is important to provide students with opportunities to work with choice. Your approach can either be a simple list of, per of potential activities to choose from or a more complex system whereby students make selections with different point values associated with those choices. 
while we will discuss these ideas in more detail later. It's important for you to realize that simply making the choice available is not enough. You must put in the structure after the choice that shows the students how to follow that particular pathway to allow them to move from the choice they make to the completion of their desired product. It is not appropriate to leave the production of a product entirely open without at least offering suggestions. In addition, you must provide rubrics and expectations up front. This is, is an idea we will discuss in more depth next week. Offering choice to your students has several benefits. First, it allows you to meet the diverse needs and learning styles that, that are ever-present in your classroom. Rather than requiring students to write a paper or create a poem, creating a range of menu options that addresses multiple intelligences will allow students to choose to produce a product that is of interest to them. Furthermore, it allows a student to choose a pathway for learning. This self-selection leads to our second benefit, instilling a sense of independence. Perhaps a student wants to focus on developing his or her strengths, he or she can choose to produce a product that does just that. However, as you continue to develop a differentiated learning environment, some of your students will begin to develop skills that are not their strengths. This, select, self, excuse me, this self selection instills a sense of independence and intrinsic motivation. The third benefit is strengthen, is strengthen student focus on the required content. When students have choices in the activities they wish to complete, they are more focused on the learning that leads to their choice product. Students begin to pay close attention to instruction and have an immediate application for the knowledge being presented in class. Menus. Think about the last time you went to a restaurant. More than likely you were given a menu that contained a list of choices for your meal. The goal was for you to select something that you wanted to eat to satisfy your hunger. Choice menus are a way of allowing students to choose what they want, uh, to choose what and how they want to learn to satisfy their learning hunger. Menus can be a simple list of activities that students can select from to demonstrate they can meet your stated learning objectives, or they can be more complex in which students earn points by making choices from different areas of study. As we move through this, uh, this section, I will discuss how to use choice menus to differentiate and illustrate three examples of menus. There are three basic ways to incorporate choice menus to differentiate the curriculum. The most common way is for enrichment and supplementary activities. In this case, the students usually do not have a lot of background knowledge, and the information about the topic may not readily be available to all students. The teacher will introduce the menu and activities at the beginning of the unit. The teacher will then progress through the content at the normal rate. Through my experiences, the easiest way to begin differentiating your instruction through tiered activities and choice activity and choice and, and choice is the prod is the project menu option. As Hecox states, they they can be used in several ways, whether it's one as a choice required uh, as, as, as a choice of required products related to the instructional unit, warm-up activities for flexible instructional groups, cool down activities alternative pathway plans for students who have looped out of skills instruction, and five as a list of activities that all students choose from. There are different ways to use instructional menus in the classroom. In order to decide who to implement, uh, uh, when to implement either of these menus, ask yourself the following questions. How much prior knowledge of the topic is being taught? How much prior knowledge do the students have? How much prior knowledge do the students have before the unit or lessons being begin and how much information is readily available for students to obtain on their own. This is an example of the tic-tac-toe menu. As you can see it contains a total of eight predetermined choices and one free choice for students. All of these choices are created at the same level of Bloom's taxonomy. Each choice carries the same weight for grading and has similar expectations for completion in terms of time and effort. Benefits of this tic-tac-toe are the flexibility that the menu, that this menu can cover one topic in depth or three different objectives. 
When this map menu covers just one objective, students have the options of completing three projects in a tic-tac-toe pattern or simply picking three from the menu. When it covers three objectives, students will need to complete a tic-tac-toe pattern to be sure they have completed one activity from each objective. The next benefit is the friendly design that students will understand how to use this menu. Finally, the weighting of all activities are equal so recording grades and maintaining paperwork is easily accomplished with this menu. The limitation of this menu is that it only covers a few topics. They are intended for shorter periods of time, say one to two weeks, and, they are less flex and there is less flexibility for students in that they have to complete the tic-tac-toe pattern. This is, is an example of the 258 menu. It has a total of eight predetermined choices, at least two choices with a point value of two, at least four with a point value of five, and at least, uh, and at least, and at least one with a point value of eight. Choices are assigned points based on levels of Bloom taxonomy. All levels of choices carry different weights and have different expectations for completion. Students can choose what combination they would like to use to obtain that point goal. The benefits of this menu is first responsibility. Students will have control over their grades because they select the point valued activity. The next benefit is guaranteed activity. This menu's design is also set up in such a way that students must uh, must complete at least one activity at a higher level of Bloom's taxonomy in order to reach their point goal. The limitations of this menu is first it tends to allow students to only focus on one topic. While I've seen some incorporate multiple topics, it works best with depth of study. The second limitation is that there is not a free choice. Finally, students will complete only one activity at a higher order level of thinking. However, you can adjust this by requiring a different amount of points to be earned. <coughs> This is an example of the list menu, sometimes called the challenge menu. As you can see, there are a set of predetermined choices, each with, each with its own point value. Choices are simply listed with assigned points based on the levels of Bloom's taxonomy. The choices carry different weights and have different expectations for completion of time and effort. A point criterion is set forth that equals 100 points. For in this instance, the instruction would, would be that students can complete as many activities as they want and in, a, in, in any combination they want. The catch is that they need to add up to 100 points. In addition, you can offer extra credit points as it would allow, as it would allow you to offer extension activities. The, bene the benefits of this menu is that students have complete control of their grade. Another benefit is that the, this menu offers concept reinforcement because it allows for an in-depth study of material. However, with the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy being represented, students who are still learning the concepts can choose from a lower point value projects to reinforce the basics before jumping to higher level activities. The limitations of this menu are first only a few topics at a certain time can be presented. The second limitation is teacher preparation in that the teacher has to have all these materials ready to go. As for time considerations, these menus are intended for to shorter amounts of completion time, such as two weeks. Really, that is all that we have for this week. wanted to just focus specifically on menus. I know that you have a lot of work ahead of you in the next week. As you can see, uh, we'll talk about evaluation for our final week, but you have a research paper due on the 23rd and that your unit is due on the 29th. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me.